All right, good morning, good morning, good morning, guys. Welcome to the Monday morning sidewalk. Hope you guys had a great weekend. This is your chance to adjust your volume so you don't freak people out in the cubicle, the office, or whatever next to you. Um, this is Monday, and it's a typical Monday morning sidewalk. What I wanted to do today is basically uh, bring you up to speed. We had a uh, very very good rain last week here in north texas right here very localized on lake ray roberts and it raised our lake about two feet in about four hours so it's very localized and what i saw is looking at the the data and everything that the lake um, basically came up really quickly topped out and it started going down the very next day so that means that the water really was concentrated on the lake and right near the lake there's not a lot of runoff continuing to add height to the lake at all. Now I haven't checked for Louisville Lake and what's going on there, but you know, part of the Monday morning sidewalk that I want to really emphasize today is that we need to have input from other parts of the state. Just me talking about North Texas, when I get people, roughly 600 people a day coming to, uh, to look and find out things on a Monday, starting on a Monday and going throughout the week, five to 600 people every day, um, it's kind of ridiculous that, that everything is concentrating on North Texas. And I know that from the statistics that people are coming from all over the, the world and, and in, this, in the country, in the state, to uh, find out information about fly fishing in Texas. So let's get on with the day. And uh, I'm going to have to refer here to my, uh, my trusty old laptop. And if you hear whirs and buzzes and all kinds of sounds, it's because it's already heated up again. We had record lows in temperature last week, but now we've got uh, right back to normal. We're gonna be about 97 degrees today and here in North Texas and throughout the state, I think things will be uh, very much more towards um, what we consider normal weather uh, patterns for Texas for the next couple of weeks. At least that's what the talking weatherheads say. And I guess that's what I'm becoming is a talking weatherhead. Um, I know a lot of you guys, based on what I see on statistics, are on vacation, and uh, you know that leads a lot of you guys to Colorado. And there's a lot of Texans in Colorado right now, fly fishing, and uh, that's a great place to be this time of year for the climate, for the fish, and uh, actually just to get away from Texas. Even though it hasn't been that hot here, it's a great place to go and a great place to be. In uh, October, September, I've got a trip planned for. Uh, Southern Colorado. It's a place I've been before and you'll find it on the website. It's the Conejos River Valley area and I'll be going with CK on that one and a couple other guys and this will be a, a fantastic trip. It always is the Conejos and it's one of my favorite if not my favorite place in Colorado. It's in Southern so it's not nearly as crowded as other areas and you know that, that, that says a lot. Once you get past the summertime in Colorado of course and out west, everywhere out west, um, once you get into September, uh, it's probably going to be a lot less crowded. A lot of places are fished out, like in town in Pagosa Springs will probably be pretty desolate. But for Colorado, they've had a record amount of snowfall and snowpack up there. So I believe the runoff is running on a little bit longer than usual. And that means, theoretically, that we should be able to fish in September, well into September, and, and it will be kind of like, July, August kind of situation. I'm hoping that's the case because uh, we've got a few days planned up there and it's a heck of a drive to get there. And, but uh, the Conejos just has never disappointed and it's just one of the most beautiful places. Make sure you go to the website and, and check that out. Just, uh, you can go to that search box on the right hand side as you're looking at the screen and just do a Google search this site for Conejos River and it'll pop up all the stories on that. We did have a wild week last week as i was saying earlier that the uh the rains came finally uh not for very long but very intense right around ray roberts the lake went up two feet if you watch the video from friday I, that rain came on thursday i went out and had to fish it on friday because i just had to see what was going on and uh this will lead to the, the uh, beginner's tip or not even beginner's tip at the end of this a video about ways to catch uh, carp when you're sight casting for carp and you want to be able to see them even when it's overcast so stay tuned for that that comes at the end and I'll tell you more about that okay what else do we have here we're even with the two feet of uh, water that we've gained overnight at Lake Ray Roberts we're still seven feet down 
but all that the habitat was green with new grasses and growth where where basically the lake used to be and so the water came up into there and we've got a situation where um, the fish are up in there pretty solidly. The water, I haven't been to the west side, but I was on the east side. The water is very clear. It's not muddy like you'd imagine rainwater to be after an intense rain on a lake, but um, it's definitely, definitely time to book your trip. And if you look at that video, you can tell. Uh, of course, as I try and struggle to cover the entire state of Texas all by myself, um, course I have to go places and do things and so next weekend it'll be to uh, Houston area I'm gonna go fishing with some friends in Houston and hopefully we will uh, get some time on the coast and do some video there and of course report from there on saltwater fly fishing although what I'm what I'm reading throughout the internet and everything is that you know redfish are pretty stable fish they're they become stable in the fact that there's they're plentiful and they're resilient and they're less susceptible to environmental like pressure changes and, and all these changes that happen in, in that ecosystem than speckled trout are. And so speckled trout are kind of the de facto trophy thing to go after because they don't have that huge variation in size that uh, redfish have up to 40 pounds and 50 pounds and what have you. So. Um, the, the idea is really if you catch a 30 inch uh, speckled trout you've done something special and what I'm seeing on the boards and everything is the speckled trout action on the coast is really picking up and you know you of course have to pay attention to tides pay attention to the, the the charts and the moon and everything else in my opinion you have to pay attention to those things and uh, so speckled trout is something that you know I've caught as a kid and I really love catching those guys and and now that you know I fly fish, I really like to uh, chalk up a few of those fly fishing. So we'll see how that works out. I'm seeing lots of photos of, of gator trout, is what they call them, the bigger guys, and uh, they are really fun to catch and, and really just about every bit as exciting as, as catching a, a nice redfish. So stay tuned for that next week. I'll be, I mean, this weekend is when I'm going, so you know, it'll be a week and a half away or two weeks before that video. If there is any video and we catch fish, I'll tell you whether we catch or not. You know, if we catch or we don't, I'll tell you what's going on. So that's just my policy here. If you're a reader of Texas Saltwater Fishing Magazine, it's a pretty average magazine at that, but it does have great charts in it. So one, one of the things you want to do is have good charts for your tides and times and things like that. Their charts are very easy to read actually in my opinion. It's something you want but in paper format. Don't go with the e-magazine because it's terrible and they just have not figured out how to do that in my opinion. It doesn't show up in your in your i, I iPad apps or anything like that. It's, it's just not, not, not any good. Um, as far as saltwater goes, there is a definitely a, a, a pretty sizable trip planned that I'm going to have to kind of red eye in and red eye out of. I'll be there for two days, and that's Port O'Connor, Texas, and we're going to go actually look at the coast, and, and I'll be with CK, and we're going to actually go out on the jetties and see if we can catch some bigger fish out there, and if, if that always fails, or <laughs> if that does fail, We'll go back in, I'm sure, and, and catch some redfish back in the flats. And there may be a situation where one, some guys fish the flats while some guys fish the jetties and then they switch out. But anyway, that's, that promises to me to be one of the, the highlights of the year. And that's also a, a, a good reason to have a 12 weight since we're going to the jetties. And I'll tell you more about that later on. As I'm scrolling through here, I just want to get, get to the end notes. Really, this is really a fast one. I'd like you to read this one more than I'd actually like you to watch. But of course, you know, we are kind of ramping up things with video. And one of the things I want to do, I'll reiterate, is that we need to bring reports from all over the state into this report on the Monday. And if it gets big enough, we'll go ahead and take this report and, and kind of pull it out of everything. And one day a week, what we'll do is we can... Uh, have a, a actual fishing report one day a week but it has to come from people who actually are doing the work out there and that's the guides here in Texas you guys know who you are I hope you're watching these videos 
I'm going to make sure and go ahead and email the guys that I, I know personally uh, that are guides on the Texas coast and anywhere else that I know to make sure that you guys know that I want your information here and it's it's strictly not where to and what to use it's about going fly fishing with you just like the reports you do in magazines or anything else so so someone who wants to know how you're doing you know in your guiding service that's what this is about I like to have updates every week or at least maybe one person different every week is to me a lofty goal but uh, at least one person a week I'd like to hear from here uh, in Texas one other guide besides myself so we can kind of spread this thing out and uh, you know actually have a report that eventually I would hope would lead to um, m you know one whole episode like on a Wednesday replacing water Wednesday with a with a fly fishing Wednesday thing that's a report from guides across the state of Texas it's up to you guys all you got to do is just send me the information and I'll read it anything you want to do just get it to me and we'll get it out so there's my offer take it or leave it <laughs> it doesn't cost a dime oh what else do we have let me uh, let me just finish with this tip today it's really a part of my philosophy in fly fishing I don't even call it philosophy it's kind of like how you do it and it comes from Caddyshack and basically I'm a juvenile so I'm sorry I have to refer to Caddyshack but uh, there's a there's a thing that I've kind of taken on my own it's called see the fish be the fish and catch the fish well the first part of see the fish be the fish catch the fish is seeing the fish and that was pretty difficult when on that video I shot on Friday because it was so cloudy so one of the ways that we have of seeing fish is with polarized sunglasses so you guys that are just starting out don't think you can go out on the water with your, your daily drivers, what I call them, just regular old sunglasses that aren't polarized and aren't colored properly and just sight and catch carp, in this case carp, but you know, redfish on the coast or whatever. So basically, let me just tell you a quick overview. Everybody's vision is different and what works perfectly for them, I'm a photographer, you know, so I know everybody's vision is different and just genetically and with your brain, the way it's wired, you have more or less sensitivity and things like that to, to bands of light. And generally, like on Friday when it's an overcast day, a pair of glasses like these Smiths, which have kind of a copper color to them, they're going and they're, they're very much in a yellow tint that yellow tint and copper color really cuts through the water on overcast days for me. That works for me. I like these. This is what I wore in the video so I could see what I was doing. Um, you know, that's made by Smith Optics. I don't, I don't have any of the new Chroma Pops. I don't know what that's about yet, so I'll have to get a look at those. If, if you're thinking Chroma Pop, everything I hear about those are really good. And here is just my daily drivers, you know, reflective lenses for Costa. These are, these are the plastic 580s, and uh, I just wanted something that I could afford to wear every day, and that's those. Sunglasses are not cheap, and uh, it's an investment in, in your abilities, actually, to catch more fish, and it'll pay off right away. So, the, so these are kind of the, what I consider the, the bay, not the bay, the, the, the freshwater flats colors right here. When you get to saltwater flats and, and when you get to saltwater things, colors change just a bit. And this color is works really well, actually both in in um, freshwater situations, pretty good, but really good in saltwater flat situations. And you know, this is a I believe called the green mirror costa. And that's, so that's another color. I, you know, I hate to say, you know, that all these are necessary, but if you fish in all these places, all these are necessary. Um, and then the last color, which I do not have because I do not do this, is what I kind of consider the ocean colors, which are the gray lens with the blue mirror. And those are considered your deep sea or ocean type uh, lenses for seeing fish underneath the surface due to the extreme capabilities of these lenses in the Costa and the Smith Optics. Uh, there's plenty of other polarized glasses out there and they all uh, have their place of course. I just 
I tend to go with what I what I hear, what the industry tells me is the best um, in the area of eyesight and vision. Because even as a you know being a photographer, my vision is pretty important to me, and you should take care of your eyes as well. And the the other side of this is for that UV protection, so you don't end up with you know, in later days and in, in later age with uh, with any kind of eye problems or uh, uh, cataracts or things like that, which I would imagine that even if you wore these every day on the, on the uh, water, uh, if you're exposed every day, cataracts are in your future. It's just a part of aging, but uh, you can sure put it off a lot longer if you, if you take care of your eyes up front. I want you guys to have a great week. It's going to be a really good week here in North Texas and across the state of Texas, I believe. You know, the rain is scattered throughout the state. I hate this to turn into a weather report, but until we get actual fishing reports from other guys besides myself, it's kind of like a, a, a weather report for you guys in your areas. And um, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.